Welcome to Season 5 of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we talk with enterprise and technology platform leaders about the people, processes, and platforms that make marketing and customer experience successful, scalable, and sustainable. This is what creates an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom, advisor and consultant for Fortune 1000 marketing and CX leaders and teams as principal and chief strategist at GK5A and best-selling author, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and Agile certified coach. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. To sign up for the Agile Brand newsletter and get the latest insights and articles on marketing technology and CX, or to purchase a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, go to gregkillstrom.com. You can also find all my books on Amazon and other retailers. And now on to the show. AI4, the world's premier conference discussing artificial intelligence and its many applications for business, was held August 7th through 9th at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas uh, just a, a few days ago and featuring some amazing speakers on important topics related to AI and business. Today, we're going to talk about the AI4 show and some of the key insights from the show. And I'm happy to be joined again by one of the many great speakers that uh, led the conversation. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome back Alice Fournier, CIO at ISS Americas. Alice, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Greg. I'm feeling pretty lucky to be back with you um, after just attending the conference. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, you know, before we get started and, and talking about some of the, the, the key insights and, and some of the discussions had at the, the conference, um, for those that missed the first episode that you joined uh, prior to the show, can you give a little background on yourself as well as on ISS Americas? Sure. Um, so I am CIO for the Americas at ISS. So ISS Americas is a facilities management company. So we handle every type of service that you need to keep offices running well, to create great workplace experiences. So uh, janitorial services, technical services, thinking about running plumbing, HVAC, electricity, changing light bulbs in buildings and real estate of all kinds. And of course, um, our Guggenheimer brand, which uh, serves fantastic cafe, cafe foods and micro market types of in-office food services. My role as a CIO is to oversee um, all of the technology infrastructure that serves our needs, as well as all these connection points with our many clients across the Americas. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's get started by, uh, so you were one of the speakers at the, at the conference and, you know, I wanted to hear if you don't mind just kind of summarizing what you talked about at AI4. Yeah, thank you. It was, um, there were so many great speakers. Um, I was pretty grateful to be one of them. What I focused my, my talk on is really around return to office and how to leverage technology to create a great experience. Of course, as you know, right, every company is, is challenged with figuring out what is it that you do to bring employees back. So we see the gamut of you know, mandating, not mandating, two days, three days, specific days, not specific days. So it's really, it's an evolving, a very alive question, and we are very much in the heart of it. And I suppose in, in the talk, my, my invitation was to really consider what is it that you can do leveraging AI, leveraging technology to make the experience in your offices or, or, you know, we have clients across manufacturing plants, production plants. What do you create in order for employees to want to come back to the office and, and mandated or not? I, I still think there's so much that can be done leveraging technology and leveraging some AI to just create something better than pre-pandemic. I mean, this is a this is an opportunity to do things differently, and technology plays a big role. So, um, so that was the core of what I, I brought up. Yeah, yeah. And so, what what what's the most exciting part about that to you, as far as the, you know, the the challenge of of return to office and hybrid and and everything? You know, where where do you see the the biggest opportunity then with with AI? Yeah, I think that the biggest opportunity is to do things differently. 
definitely around sustainability. There's a lot um, happening around food waste. We touched on it. That's an area that I'm always very, very inspired with. Um, so leveraging different kinds of technologies, uh, proprietary to us or not through partnership, but looking at waste, you know, energy consumption in buildings, uh, managing the, the the food waste to whatever our chefs are not using, but also our customers' employees and how do we help them limit food waste, bring you know more recyclable, compostable, uh, that's not AI-driven, but it's part of the sustainability component of creating a great experience. But that that discussion around leveraging technology to create a more sustainable approach to the physical workplace is one that I keep going back to as, as a really exciting impact that we can have on and on multi-stakeholders, really on people and the planet, on you know our wallet and, and our customers' wallet. So it's a real sweet spot. Uh, so I would say that's probably the area that is most exciting to me. But but then again, you know, there, there's there are other simpler uses that are also meaningful and impactful in businesses. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I loved about the lineup at the AI4 conference was just the diversity of practice areas. You know, I, a few weeks prior to that, I spoke at a conference that was really just focused on marketing and AI, which was fun in and of itself. I mean, marketing uh, is certainly an area that I know a lot about and and um, have been in the industry for a while. But I, I think the diversity here was really interesting to me. And, you know, while I like a, a focused discussion uh, from, you know, in, in many ways, I think the benefit here was to see just how AI can help in such a broad spectrum of ways in, in the world of business. So given that, what were maybe some either sessions or ideas or, or thoughts that that you heard during the show that were maybe well outside of your industry, but that were, that were really interesting. Yeah, there's, there was, that was a benefit. You're absolutely right. Of this conference is that you could see application and uses and, and struggles really across yeah. just about every industry The the highlights there, it's hard to capture them. I think much like you, you know, I have a, a long, long retail background, so anything that touches, and, and there was a, a great a great presentation by someone from Dick's Sporting Good on leveraging AI, but through in, in their marketing approach. So that was definitely very interesting and a, a really great application. So retail is always super, super interesting to me. Uh, but the, the probably... Some of the, the the really interesting one was the opening keynote. The keynote was by a company called Wonder Dynamics, and they do AI in filmmaking. Now, the technology itself was super interesting, but what was really, really exciting was the gentleman's story, um, his own story, where basically he's developed this company that opens up producing movies through leveraging AI in a way that uh, makes it much more accessible. We know the kind of cost that, you know, big blockbuster productions are hundreds of millions of dollars. His approach helps through AI make it more accessible to a wider set of people to enter the market of movie making. And when, when one of the things that he was discussing about his kind of bigger purpose was around inspiring more people, creating access, leveling the playing field a bit, and then connecting that back to his own story as an immigrant. Um, I, I forget which country specifically he was from, but I believe he was from the ex-Yugoslavia region. So he himself would have never dreamt to be part of the movie making world. But through these technologies, has found a way to to participate in this world. So I, I love that aspect, which is back to this idea that AI and the development of AI, because it's so new, everyone can can learn. Um, and you have people, of course, this doesn't diminish the people who have worked in this space for many many years and developed the the models behind the models that that support it, 
But as far as where we are now, it's becoming much more accessible. So the, the applications in many cases would show how you can level the playing field and, and open access to, to spaces that might have had barriers. So that, that was a real, yeah. real highlight. Before we continue, let's take a quick break. If you're like many marketing leaders today, you're inundated with a need to improve the customer experience across an increasing number of channels and touch points, all while ensuring your team is performing well, innovating, and continuously improving. So how do you find the time to determine what's next for you, your team, your brand, and your customers? My company, GK5A, can help. Whether it is advisory services, evaluation of marketing technology platforms and solutions, or digital agencies and implementation partners, or assistance with creating strategic roadmaps and prioritization of efforts, we've done it all and served as an ally to Fortune 1000 brands and industries like financial services, healthcare, consumer electronics, professional services, and more. You can learn more about these services and contact us at www.gk5a. That's www.gk5a.com. Now let's get back to the show. You know, I think the trend of there's, I think a lot of different terms for it, but the the citizen data scientist or the, you know, low code, no code uh, interfaces for these things. I mean, you know, just the the fact that we're, I, we were chatting right before we started this interview. You know, Chat GPT. You know, it, it gets all the oxygen these days as far as the conversations go, and while it's only one piece of this, it it does get some credit for kind of opening up this whole conversation in a, in a broader way and, and just kind of demonstrating the benefits of when you democratize some of these tools and, and methods, there's some really interesting things can start happening. So was that, you know, did you see that kind of throughout that, that democratization of, of access and, and, and stuff like that? Did you see that throughout yeah, absolutely. That was a that was a huge theme. This idea that it, you 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 need new skills in order to meet this world, right? And and skills around critical thinking, curiosity, comfort with uncertainty, which which that does democratize because there was a time where you know technology. I, I mean, I think it's still it's still the case. I see it in my day to day, but. Technology and definitely AI were very um, scary, and yeah. and people wouldn't you know feel comfortable. And I think definitely that ChatGPT and and you know the techno that these technologies have removed a lot of the fear and and make it definitely available. And we saw it. I loved um, someone mentioned in one of the conferences, you know how and and you'll know that this touches right into right in my heart, but technology for frontliners and the, the statement that the gentleman made was, you know, build with and for your frontliners, not against them. Mm -hmm. And I love that because that's what technology can do. If you go into the field of your workforce and you understand what the needs are, then the technology doesn't, doesn't come in to replace people it just comes in to make their lives hopefully better and their work better and, and to bring what only the human touch can bring and let the more, you know, repetitive, less value adding task be maintained by, by AI. And he, I, I really enjoyed that sentence and it stuck with me because I thought, you know, this is not about robots taking over the world. It's really, if we do it well, and if we think this through, it's about creating technologies that that help people. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, you know, I, I subscribe to that. Uh, let's call it the more optimistic approach because you know I've seen, I'm sure you have as well, and and many listening. You know, we've 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 all been through a few of these trends and the the scare of okay, you know, this is going to change everything, <laughs> and 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 <laughs> and surely AI has the power to change lots of things. And it's, it has to your point earlier, it's also been around for decades. So, you know, it's not like it's a brand new, new thing, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I think the discussion around just the role of augmentation as opposed to, you know, re replacing jobs is, is certainly one that 
it, I think it needs to keep being talked about because I think there is still a lot of fear and, and, you know, some of that fear is, is warranted. You know, there, there are some jobs that are going to get replaced and, and there are portions, certainly portions of jobs that, that are going to get replaced. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I think, do you, do you overall get the sense that there is some optimism in the, in the community then? Oh yeah. I'm a, I- I'm a fundamental optimist and, and there is plenty. Um, there's tons of optimism around everything it can contribute to the world, to business, you know, and, and to come in as an augmenter. And I know we, we had discussed that, uh, but that was definitely the theme. I was actually quite curious to know how it would be addressed in the room or in the different uh, discussions and that's really how people are thinking about it a way to augment a way to do more so i think that that's a, absolutely fantastic and you know one of the other one of the other big statements that came across just about every single conference that or or every single presentation that i attended was the the need to find the right use cases because this is where this is where i think you 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 get some successes. And that's when you really understand what is it that you, you'll you use this thing for. If you just want to do AI, uh, that's, a re, you know, that's a way to waste a lot of mm-hmm. money for your organization. Right. But everyone was discussing how when you hit that sweet spot, when you find the use case that AI is really good for and very applicable for, then wow, you can just nail things. Um, and and that was, it was fascinating because you know people as presenters we don't get in a room and align our presentations. Everybody does their own thing, but that message of find the right use cases, ask the big questions before deep diving into AI. Those questions were, you know, everyone somehow in their presentation had that statement. And, and that was positive because sometimes with, with technology, you know, when, when a lot of enthusiasm gets generated around the technology, everyone just wants to go do. But because you had a lot of leaders, many of whom were in the room and had been working with AI for, for a long time, that was a real um, big statement uh, and it was great to hear because I, I do think it's important. I think, especially now putting back my CIO role, you know, as leaders, as technology leaders and organization, that's our role to help say, hey, yes, yes, and yes, we'll do, we'll work with AI and we're going to understand where is it that it can impact the business most meaningfully. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this, in in some ways this feels familiar for, you know, for I'm sure you and and others as well as you know whenever there's a shiny object in in the you know it was you know pick your pick your uh, pick your shiny object from the last several decades or so and um you know do you think it makes it different though that because AI is so dependent on not only data but good data you know do you think that makes it different as far as you know when we're talking about asking the right questions and and setting up the right tests and, or, or is this, is this just sort of a continuation of, of, of the latest trend? And, and hopefully we're learning a little bit about asking the right questions ahead of time. Well, I think it, it makes it different. Yes. This data component does. There were other technologies that came that you could adopt almost call it, I'll, I'll say in a silo, it's not that yeah. simple, but you know, you could, you could bring them into a business without really a deep reflection on on the how and and yeah. the outcome and but i i do think that where ai becomes significantly different is is data is it relies on data but both the upstream and the downstream so the upstream because you know it, it's so complex to figure out all the data sets and all the right questions and the right prompts that you need to train your AI. So what's going to go in it and how will you train the models? So you have to clean it upstream. And most organizations have been struggling with that. And AI is definitely not going to be a solve. And if nothing else, it'll cause more problems because it will expose the challenges with your data. But the, the 
downstream piece of this, which I really liked, um, and this was presented from someone from MasterCard, brilliant, brilliant presentation. And she was saying the more, the more critical the risk, the more distance. And by that, what she meant was if the, the decision that you will make based on the output of your model has a high, high risk. So you may be discussing people's lives, people's credit, um, whatever it is, or, or big business decision. You know, will you make a sizable investment, a uh, sizable divestiture? So the more risk that your decision has, the, the more distance you have to put. And by distance, it's about really challenging the outcome, looking back at your data. And I like that. So if you have a low risk decision, you can probably make it with you know, an approximation because that is how you have to think about the output. But if your risk is, is very, very critical, very oh, not your risk, but your decision is critical and it's high risk, then you should put more distance and ask bigger questions of the, of, of the output. Uh, so I, I really like that. I think it's important to how we, we leverage these tools in, in government, in business, in our, and even in our personal lives. Yeah, yeah. Any uh, any surprises from the show? Just, you know, something, you know, it could be something you didn't really expect to find as compelling as you did, or just some things that, you know, so, something that, that caught you a little off guard. Not so much off guard, but you know what I always love? I Probably because it's not a field that I've ever evolved in. I love to hear how the government uses mm. these innovative tools. There were a couple presentations and every time, I mean, you know, you, we, we sometimes think of the government and it is a massive organization. I know the challenges of pivoting and changing and innovating in, in large corporations, but I cannot imagine what that requires in government settings. And, and we heard from different government agencies and I'm always I'm always excited when I hear of, of the innovation within the government at every level, whether there were municipalities, state government, and federal government. I love that because I think the government, in the end, is, a, is an investor in, in all of our future. And so a lot of the innovation that I see, to me, is just unexpected because it's not, it's not generally the reputation, if you would. And when you see it, you think, wow, this is inspiring that you have people you know, within the government, within these massive, massive, really complex machines, really pushing for innovation and for different ways of doing things. It just, I always feel very inspired when I see that. So that I would say that was my, yeah. uh, my big highlight. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's always... I mean, I live right outside Washington, D.C., so I should know this stuff, too. But it's I, it's easy to forget that, you know, for all of the bureaucracy stories and, you know, slow moving stuff that, you know, yeah, the they they put people on the moon and they, yeah. you know, they're all of these amazing and, you know, even in the security industry and, you know, national security and all those kinds of things like amazing innovations. But, yeah, you don't you don't really think of you think of. Um, those kinds of things coming out of purely Silicon Valley or, or something like that. So yeah, def definitely interesting. Nice. Well, Alice, thank you so much for joining again. Uh, really, really appreciated you coming back here. What are your next steps? You know, as as you not only your your work with ISS America is already in progress, but maybe you know picking up some some additional ideas or, or insights. You know, where where do you see you know exploring and implementing AI in the enterprise next? I think uh, we're going to be focused on the areas that we're already focused in. Um, I, I did pick up a few ideas, but I won't share them with you. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. No worries. No worries. <laughs> but maybe I'll come back in a few months and, and yeah, share the yeah. outcomes. Um, but yeah, we, we have a lot of areas that we're working towards and, you know, working on our data and truly serving the needs of our customers. A lot of those needs will benefit from um, continuing to work on data and to focus on how we best understand 
uh, the way information travels. Because in the end, you know, IT is is information technology. Yeah. So I'm I'm super excited about everything that's happening in the world, uh, but certainly in our world at ISS, and just uh, excited to share a lot of these insights with my team. And uh, thank you for having me again. Really appreciate it. And that's a great podcast and keep doing it. Oh, well, thank you so much. Again, I'd like to thank Alice Fournier, CIO at ISS Americas, for joining the show. You can learn more about Alice, ISS, and the AI4 conference by following the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkillstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. To get a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, visit my website or you can find it on Amazon or other retailers. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link, a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile.